Hey everyone, it is Desiree and I am here with day one of our Spellbinders week or video one, however you want to say it. And we're going to start this week off with the card kit of the month. And this is for November and this is called Merry Wishes. So of course we've got a great and awesome Christmas theme going through this kit. <coughs> As always, let's start out with the contents that come in your kit. As always, you get your card. On the one side, there's inspiration, and on the other side, it tells you what is actually going to be in your kit. Here is the card stock, black, gray, white, uh, pink, red, light blue, yellow, a piece of gold mirror, green, your double-sided foam squares, and the entire piece can be used, some gold sequins that are in different sizes within that pack, your 10 envelopes and your 10 cards. These are based on a standard A2 size um, yeah, the bases are standard A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, and they are side folding. You always get a six by six paper pad, and this is the paper that comes in this. Now, remember, this is a paper pad, so I'm going to say this is about 65 pounds. This is not cardstock. These are great for layering. Um, I really do enjoy all the choices you get, and you get two sheets of each design and I'm just flipping through each of those for you. Some are foiled with gold, um, and then the other half, of course, are not. Your chipboard stickers, you get two sheets of those um, in your packet, and their sentiments and images. You also will be getting your double-sided tape, as always, and then you have some sentiments in gold and black and banners. For this kit, you get a packet of journaling cards. Um, they are two-sided, and I'll be flipping through those here. These are great for layering, too. One of the things, um, just in case you have not seen my videos before, when it comes to this kit, I love collaging. Um, so these cards are a great base to start that. And then, of course, my absolute favorite part is the die cut uh, packet. This is the die that will be coming in your kit, and it creates an awesome lamp post. So let's dive in into our first card. I've taken a piece of the pattern paper, and I've cut it down into a certain size. And then I want to make sure that I have a thin line of the gold foil. I'm going to trim that with my long scissors, and then I'm going to adhere this to my front card panel, which I chose the black. I really wanted this to have a strong statement, and whenever you use black cardstock, it will make the item or the image, your focal image, stand out. So I have this layered. I'm going to set this on the front of my card base. And then I'm just going to pop up the wreath. Now, between the pattern paper and the wreath, they're both the focal point. So that black with that gold mirror strip will really do um, or have the ability to make this pop up. I do enjoy using black when it comes to the holidays. Um, I think it is an excellent accent piece. So whether I'm using the traditional red, green, and gold, I will add black into that. I'm going to add some of the sequins, and for that I'm using my wax pencil with a really long extender. Just saying. And that is our first card. For our second card, I've always I will always try to take care of some of the die cutting and the setting on all of these cards because I do 10 cards with this kit. So you can see I've already I used one of the dies from my hem stitch scent and I've die cut that out and I've put it on an angle. I'm going to use some double-sided foam tape and I'm going to go around this frame so that this frame is popped up just a little bit. I took a piece, another piece of the pattern paper with the poinsettias, and I've cut that to be four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to fill in the rest of this frame with 
um, my double-sided tape because then I have my sentiment backed onto, once again, black cardstock, and I'm just going to have that be a strip. I'm going to take off the release paper, and I am going to set that down on top of the pattern paper. Now, if I should be crooked um, or off just a little bit, that will be very easy for me to trim up with my scissors, and I just do that on an angle to make sure that it's not seen underneath, and I chose to do that on each of them. I'll use my liquid adhesive just to set that down onto the front. And now I'm going to get my sentiment ready. So you can see I have Christmas um, done in the gold. And what I'm going to do is follow the pattern lines on the pattern paper that this is sitting on. I will trim the excess away. And then I have a sub sentiment um, that says magical. And I'm just gonna place that right up there on the top and that'll overhang just a little bit. I'm going to add some of the sequins to the large floral image. Just to add even more sparkle. And of course, I'm fighting with a sequin here. That is our next card. So for this one, we're going to go with a brighter color, but you can still see that I've pulled in the black, again, to help those colors stand down, to separate them, because there is a lot of color going on. I'm using the double-sided tape just to put down on my pieces before I start layering onto my black panels. Again, when you use a mat, no matter if it's for pattern paper or an image, when you mat it, it's almost as if you're framing it. You're helping it to stay segregated from everything that's going on on the front of your card. I also do this by using vintage photo. Vintage photo around the image will do the same thing. Now, some people think that vintage photo dirties something and in a way it does um, I do look at the vintage photo it's definitely one of my staples um, you know a lot of people are asked you know if you could have just the one thing in your craft room what it would what would it be and I have to say I would say my vintage photo <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's a staple <laughs> Um, but I do like what it does, and it works well with all colors. So does black. Um, but black is a definite frame. Now, you saw that I took one of, when it comes to the ho-ho-ho, I cut up one of the journal cards. Um, and I just, instead of keeping it together, I used the strips. And now I'm just layering all of my pieces so that they can be seen. And again, they can be tucked away. They can be... You know, however you would want them to be positioned, absolutely and totally, totally fine. Here I'm just making sure that they are down as low as I can so that I don't have to trim any of them. Um, so again, just layering that. So I'm really filling up the front of this card. Actually, um, because of the colors and because they all go together so well, I'll be able... Um, to pull, to put all these together, and then I'm just going to prop that last one up using the double-sided foam squares, and then I've actually took one of the presents from the die cut and just adding that so that that picture can have some um, dimension as well, and that was a journal card also that I just cut. So here I took two pieces of pattern paper. The first one, of course, has a wood design, and I cut that to be four and a quarter by five and a half. And then there was another piece of pattern paper where it just had stri uh, script going across it that said, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. So I was just careful and just cut along those strips. So I'm just going to create a pattern going across this um, piece of wood in different with different, you know, separations on the top 
and the bottom. And of course, I've got to knock this right out of my angle here because it's what I do. I've been hitting things like all week. It's amazing. I'm going to trim off those edges and they will also be my sentiment because it says Merry Christmas. I'm going to use my double-sided tape to put this down on the standard A2 size card base. And then we will set the focal points in place. The beautiful point set is, and I'm actually going to use two of them. So I'm going to set the one down and then the second one, I'm actually going to use double-sided foam squares so that that can be propped up just right in the front. And then my banner will go right underneath, but still able to see the Merry Christmas. I'm going to add some sequins to the center of the poinsettias just to add some shimmer and shine. For our next card, again, we're just going to do some simple collaging. Um, I did cut a piece of the solid cardstock in pink and I cut a piece of pattern paper just to be smaller. So I'm going to have these different layers that are going to come through this card. So I'm actually using the pink. That's four and a quarter by five and a half. Then the white that's cut to four and one eighths by five and three eighths. And then the pattern paper is cut four by five and a quarter. So I went down an eighth for each layer just to have this thin border that goes around. These are really soft colors, but I really did just love the images on this. So I chose images that were similar to make sure that they did have that watercolor feel and look. I'm just playing with the placement of my pieces. And then we are just going to prop them up. And this is a combination of the die cut pieces and also some of the chipboard pieces that are coming in. Trying to figure out, I want the um, candy cane in there. <laughs> I just got to figure out how I want it. I don't want to lose it in the background. Um, of the pattern paper, because this is very similar, as you can see, to that. So I figured by crossing over the mailbox and the ho 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 um it would be able to stand out and then i just added that last chipboard piece down below so for our next i have i pulled some of the ornaments um i pulled down um some of the pattern paper um i also cut down one of the journaling cards and I'm using some of the gold to have that accented um, and I'm going to prop the panel up using some double-sided tape but that's going to sit off to on an angle and then I'm going to have our ornaments coming off of that corner Now, I was toying with the idea of adding thread or strips of gold mirror cardstock so that it looks like that they're hanging down. It was a lot of toying around. It was kind of interesting here. Um, but I finally... <laughs> 
um, figured out what I wanted to do <laughs> um, and to just get them placed um, where I wanted them you know to go um, for some reason there was a lot of times where I was struggling with that so giving this a shot I'm going to put that in and I believe if I remember this is the only one that I kept on there I was going to add these the other ones but you can see that green ornament just really would come almost even with the other one and I didn't want it to cross over and you can see I did not like that one going through the whole panel there so I was able to just pull that off without damaging the paper I'm going to take the chipboard bow, uh, bow, wow, bow, and I'm going to put that off of the corner as well, making sure I have double-sided foam on the other side of that. I'm going to add some gold to the tops of my ornaments. Again, just to add a little bit. And I must have some glue stuck to my wax pencil um, because it, it just will not sometimes release these sequins. It's really funny. So this one's awesome. Yeah, we're going to keep this in normal speed because yeah, totally forgot to hit the record button. Yay me. So I grabbed all the tags, layered them up, added some sequins to the top just to cover up the hole, holes. Mmm. <laughs> and three sentiments. Only me. <laughs> Between speaking and not hitting the record button. Oh my goodness. Um, I really do enjoy making all of these cards. I hope you all enjoy watching them. <laughs> so as you can see, here's the vintage photo. <laughs> oh wow. Alright, so I'm going to go around each of the edges um, of the images that I chose. So you see I have a lot of greens, I have a lot, of, I chose the trees, I cho chose a large poinsettia, and a landscape of a city um, line, and then of course one of the journaling cards. And usually if I don't have the journaling cards, I will make the journaling cards out of the solid cardstock. Again, to just help give that base um, to the collage and again I kept everything in when it came to these cards you know how um, I designed them how I, I played around with the layouts it did I struggle with the layouts um, I wanted you guys to see all of that um, when it comes to that process because again, it can change. I mean, as you're putting things together, you know, like I always say, you're going to the right and all of a sudden you're just going to shoot right over to the left um, and get those in place. So I want the trees to just sit behind that city landscape. So I'm going to put phone squares on each side of that landscape so that it can straddle the one tree that it's going to go across on. So it's like a little tiny image down below. And then I'm going to have that poinsettia coming off the corner of that journaling card. But I do want that one propped up as well. Because then I'm going to fill in with all that black and white greenery. It's funny to say greenery when it's black and white. Um, that's sitting right there. And I'm just going to play with those. But I am going to extend them to make sure that it just balances out the bottom of this card. I, I do have a lot going on when it comes to the bottom. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive just to put these in. And you can see I'm only putting glue on the tips. I'm okay if they curl up on the end. Again, it just gives a lot of dimension. Um, here I'm just trying to find a place for this to sit in, but I'm actually going to trim some of that off um, just so that it will sit nicely underneath that. I'm going to add some sequins to the trees and the center of the um, poinsettia. 
was having a lot of problems with my wax pencil, so I figured, all right, I'll just use my tweezers. <laughs> Me and the sequins on these were not getting along <laughs> at all. And I think the sequins won, <laughs> to be really honest. Um, I love my wax pencil. I think they are, they are great. Um, they're a great alternative to the other pieces of equipment that are out there. Okay, back to the card. So I just got one of the tone on tone pieces of pattern paper and I'm going to use the stamp set. So there's some beautiful images within the stamp set, um, to, to use, to create those silhouettes. And I love the font of the sentiments. I think it is really, really pretty, um, how that looks. So what I'm doing here is just getting these set up. Now this panel's going to be cut down um, just a little bit when I'm done because I want it to be the width of where those trees are starting and ending. I'm going to prep my uh, pattern paper with my anti-static tool. I'm going to use my clear ink by Simon Says and I'm going to stamp it just a couple times making sure that I get it back into that upper corner there. And then I'm going to use, <coughs> excuse me, um, some gold embossing powder. And this is by Recollections. And then I'm going to add some of the stars. Um, now it's funny, I lost the middle star. I have no idea where it got to. I don't remember it taking taking it off, but somehow I lost the middle star. <laughs> this was just not my day, <laughs> but I fell in love with this kit um, and had way too much fun with it. But that's what our panel looks like. Again, simply embossing your images and maybe even if you don't have a color, if you just have that clear ink, it'll change the color of the paper just get clear embossing powder and it'll still take on that color that it changed to and you get this beautiful tone on tone. Here I am, I'm just trimming this up just a little bit. And then you can see the pattern paper that I have off to the side there is also the white with the gold polka dots. So I'm going to take this panel and I'm gonna cut a piece from the gray cardstock and I'm just measuring to see how big I need to have this piece cut and I'm going up an eighth of an inch um, in the size for the mat. Gray for me works the same as black. They're just very neutral colors. Um, now Black can have a warm side, it can have a cool side, so can gray. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye on, and trust me, your eyes will let you know that if you're using a warm black to frame something that's on the cool side, it will tell you. Um, absolutely. It will definitely tell you in no time flat. So we're removing the release paper and we're going to put that onto our card base. And then I'm gonna use my double-sided foam tape to prop up this panel. Again, just to give it some dimension. Um, I love adding dimension to my cards. Sometimes I get a little bit crazy with it, meaning I'll put one layer at a dimension and then I'll add another layer with dimension um, and so forth. And that's okay. I use larger size envelopes for my cards. I struggle with the one standard A2 size envelopes, so I just get the bigger ones. So I'm using my blending brushes by Pink and Main um, to just put a light color of um, my Concord and Ninth inks. So I'm using Aqua Sky and I believe Ocean Side, I think is what the, the colors are. Um, or ocean mist. I'm not sure. It's ocean something, I think. Um, and again, just adding a little bit of color. So now we are going to construct our lampshade. 
um, and this old style lampshade is great. Now, learn from my mistakes. Don't put pieces where they don't belong. Don't put them on upside down. Uh, <laughs> I love the detail that Spellbinders provides with their dies to the point where not only do you have these little tiny intricate parts, <laughs> but they're also embossed, um, which I just find phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. So I chose black as the base and gray as the upper part. Figured it could act as if it's a highlight um, or the black and the gray would work off of each other with the shadows and so forth. Um, I did throw in a little bit of white. Now I'm sure it's supposed to be part of the lantern itself. You'll see the little tiny jagged. I took it as snow <laughs> on the rim of the lantern which is fine. Again, we can do, you know, it's, it's another way to stretch our, our dies or our stamps out. And the reason you'll see why I did that, because in the die set as well, there is a snow drift that the lamp goes into to make it look like there's snow on the base. So I figured that little tiny strip of white that you can see I'm really struggling with here um, would help. Now I'm using the Aqua Sky or the lighter shade um, of my Concord and Ninth inks just to um, go along those drifts. I cut out the Noel twice in the gold and the black cardstock. The black will sit behind and just create a shadow um, for that sentiment to stand out. I did cut the wreath twice um, just to make it look fuller um, instead of the one layer, just to add a second one on top. Um, again, just to give it some dimension. I am going to come around that with some vintage photo. Absolutely gives it some highlight and I'm going to place it right onto my lamp so that it can hang there. I grabbed the presents from the die cut pack and I also cut many of the bows. It's a two step bow from the die. So you put down the V first and then you put the loops on top. Now I'm gonna do that with the presents as well. Why not? We're just going to emphasize the bow and if you still see the bow that's already imprinted, it's just gonna make it look like a double bow. Um, but again, just to give that dimension. Now, always grab something heavy when you're doing this fine detail work, I never do because I'm impatient. When you're working with the mirror cardstock from Spellbinders, it's double-sided, meaning it's double mirrored on each side. So it will take a little bit longer to grab a hold of what it's being adhered to if it's a liquid glue. I'm just saying. Me, I'm impatient extremely impatient. So I don't do that. So you and every once in a while you're going to see these bows just flying off like the ones already crooked over there that I'm seeing. Um, so yeah, just saying, just a suggestion. Just know that I learn. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to place my <laughs> lamp post in my snow drift <laughs> and get that set down. And then I will be propping up the other snowdrifts along with my packages. So you can see the packages are going to be down below along with one of the sentiments that says ho, ho, ho. So that one's definitely going to have some double-sided tape. And then we're going to place another package in the snow drift as well and again i know it's not a snow drift it's just a little pile of snow but let's just go with it and then we're just going to place our other packages in and around now keep in mind the entire time <laughs> i'm doing this yes i am 
looking at the fact that I must have an uneven number of packages. Um, even though I've got like four and you could count the ho-ho-ho, which would make it five. But see what happens when you don't have the heavy object on there? See it? That bow just popped right off. Um, and so did that one. So, <laughs> because I'm also tearing that one off. So I was glad it kind of didn't stick because I wanted to make it a landscape. Um, or a portrait instead of a landscape present. And I definitely wanted that one because now adding in that fourth one that's sitting there, now I would have had two presents the same color. It runs through all of our minds. Don't tell me it doesn't. Don't judge. Um, we all do that. We must have items that are different colors and that stand out beautifully. <laughs> and I'm still having problems with those bows. So I do hope everyone enjoyed um, the cards that we made. As always, here is a rundown. And for this, I always do keep it in normal speed. Um, you know, maybe you'll catch something that <coughs> was not caught on the film. So I do hope you enjoyed the 10 cards that I made. Um, using the Spellbinders Kit of the Month for November. And again, it is called Merry Wishes. So definitely a strong Christmas theme. This is, a, as I said, day one. So I found I'm just going to group all of the Spellbinders video. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting just to see the different um, items come together and how they could possibly work together if I choose to do that as well. So I do hope you enjoyed day one. Look out for day two. That will be tomorrow, absolutely. But as always, the links for all the product that I used here and links to their clubs that are also available on a monthly basis and their blog for inspiration and their shop, because we have to shop, will always be listed down below. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Continue to enjoy your day. Um, continue to stay safe and healthy as we all continue through our journey together. And that's a key phrase there. Um, but always remember what is most important for me. Even if you just do it just a little bit each day, give it a try. <laughs> just always be creative. And I'll see you on day two. Take care.